So in, in the last short video, or not so short video, I uh, explained that if you have a dynamical system described by differential equations, you can always reduce it to a map by cutting the flow with a Poincaré section. That's a nice thing to say, but you'll find out that in practice, it might be quite tricky finding good Poincaré sections or sets of sections. In particular, it's almost impossible to find one hypersurface that cuts all orbits you care about transversally. But there are many settings in science and engineering where you actually don't need these differential equations. Very soon we'll get one which will be called billiards, which will be very easy to deal with. But there are all kinds of settings where you really care about a map. For example, your counting number of fish in a lake and every spring you come on the same day and count how many fish are there. So your dynamics is an annual map from number of fish this year to number of fish next year. And it's a perfectly good thing to study and historically it turns out to be one of the first interesting applications of chaos. It's uh, a branch of population dynamics today. So the maps can show up and what do they look like? It's just anything where we have our state space. Here is our state space. And then we have a law which takes a point in a state space. So here we are, a point in a state space. And in one time interval, so point at time n and point at time n plus one, I get unique value. In that case, the time is incremented by one. So we don't have continuous, but discrete time. Uh, for example, we argue that you can, in Poincaré section, that you can always compute the return map. So this map here, this is where I started point x in Poincaré section where I land at time k and what I can do is uh, this is this point is d minus one dimensional vector because it's called dimension one space so I have this index k and I can do some kind of multinomial fit to the values of this p I computed for different axes so I can actually compute this and that gives me a return map meaning that it gives me an explicit function which I compute such that point xn lands in a Poincaré section at time n plus one. Uh, you might not believe it, but stability of solar system is computed way, this way by uh, Jack Wisdom. He, you know, he constructs a humongous uh, return map, but this enables him to speed from going in seconds that you have to integrate the whole celestial firmament to steps which are maybe 10 or 100 or 1,000 years at a time if this map is cleverly constructed. So it's not as crazy as it sounds. Or you can do the thing that was done by Marcel and Ohm. Uh, you can look at either Rosler or Lorentz flow and look at the return map and say, look, you know, I understand what it does qualitatively. Let me just do a simple map that captures the important part of qualitative dynamics. So the simplest thing that can be extracted from three-dimensional flow pursing a two-dimensional surface is a return map which is second order. Second order. So this is not a linear map. And what this map does, uh, please read Kao's book about details, it takes an area in the plane, area in the plane, and then it stretches it. That's done by this factor A 
stretch. CA is some number larger than 1, so it's stretching. And then you fold it, and folding is done by squaring, because what squaring does is it takes both positive and negative values. See, here we have positive values, and here we have negative values on the unit interval. It stretches both of them, maps them into positive values. And then there is, you know, some parameter which will turn out to be thickness of strange attractor. Strange attractor. And uh, this silly little map, so this is two-dimensional. You can put it on computer, and uh, you run it. That's what Anon did a long time ago. And he chose some parameter values that seemed sensible to them. There was enough stretching and enough compression. You can see the structure. And out comes an amazing structure. What comes out is fractal. And that's an object that has a property that you can see that uh, we didn't get some simple parabola like we saw in return maps before, or some, you know, map that just both. It's something that has many branches. So you can see that it looks like that, and looks like that, and has some stuff. And if you enlarge, you will find out that no matter how much you enlarge any detail of that map, in enlargement, it will look like this. So you'll have many, many horizontal sheets uh, up to printer precision. If you enlarge it by a factor 1,000, you'll still have this, and it'll go on ad infinitum. So this incredibly simple thing, I take two numbers, and I evaluate square or one of them, I add them up, and produce two other numbers. You can easily put it on a pocket calculator if you own such a thing. And out of it comes something that's really, really complex if you start thinking about it. So that's one of the maps that people find very useful to explain basic ideas of nonlinear dynamics. It's nonlinear dynamics because the first time you introduce nonlinearity, just quadratic. This is the simplest thing that can happen, and that captures almost everything you need to know about chaos. Now, if this parameter b here is taken small, so make it small, eventually you realize that if b is taken very small, it doesn't contribute here. So y is just taken for a ride, and this is actually just quadratic map, uh, written on this page. So this is just a humble parabola. Now, in this case, we are giving up determinism in the past, because when we look at this equation, we can really invert it because quadratic equation has two roots. But forward in time, this is unique. And it turns out this humble map is incredibly rich as well. So we will discuss this in great detail. So the simplest nonlinear thinking possibly right, which is parabola, quadratic equation, captures almost everything about chaos. So to summarize, if you have some problem in the lab or in your research, and it's posed in terms of differential equations, reduce those differential equations numerically to a map called Poincaré section. You'll be very happy you did. You will understand the flow much better, because that will reveal the transverse motions of the neighbors in that flow. So that's a powerful visualization tool, and essential conceptually. Uh, what you will learn later on, that this is an example of something much bigger, which is that whenever you have a continuous symmetry, in this case, the only symmetry we continued is that our equations were unchanged in time. So our dynamics is the same, the laws of motion are the same, 
the system is autonomous. So there's a continuous symmetry of defining, you know, the zero second on your clock. And reflection of it, that there is one preferred direction, which is the tangent of trajectory, that is not really interesting because flow along the spaghetti is not so exciting. So you cut it and you quotient the symmetry because in the transverse flow, you don't have continuous symmetry only. You only have clock stroboscopic moments, you know, one minute, two minutes, three minutes, etc.